I started my career in London at Covent Garden as a street performer. Covent Garden's an area in London. We used to call it The Garden. We used to go down and do shows in The Garden. And now I'm at The Garden. A long fucking way. And it's the American dream, baby. It's the American dream. But in fact, I'm European, so it's the European dream. <laughs> so, God, I'm actually nervous. <laughs> I don't care, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yes, so, um, tonight I thought I'd talk to you about everything that's ever happened. Um, <laughs> with some gaps. And, and that's because you people, you are the chosen people. Not chosen by God, but self-choosing chosen people. <laughs> but I'm happy for there to be a God. If there is some rhyme and reason to what he's doing, I'm happy if he can come down right now and explain himself. Never comes. <laughs> he's never come to any of my gigs. We send invites, we put them up the chimney. Santa Claus came one day. <laughs> I'm hoping that if he did come, he'd come there. And I'd be looking like this, he'd turn up there. And that'd be sure he has a sense of humor. But I can prove there is no God. There's two little proofs I have here. One, that he doesn't fucking come down, ever. And two, if there was a God, he would have flicked Hitler's head off. <laughs> Don't you think? Because, you know, some people say, oh, God's not supposed to intervene. Well, fuck off then, you know? <laughs> a lot of people have got into a lot of cold stone buildings and mumbled very positive things towards him. He could at least have flicked Hitler's head off, don't you think? <laughs> Hitler left clues. That book, Mein Kampf, which is German for I'm going to kill everyone. <laughs> and he was doing those speeches. He looked, you know, he didn't look like he was talking about happiness, was he? He was going, I'm going to kill them, I'm going to murder them, I'm going to cut them up. And during one of those speeches, if God had just put his arm through the building in a Monty Python style, <laughs> and just gone... <laughs> and all the Nazis would have gone, hey, hey! <laughs> God, we got a leader who can do that with their head! Yeah. Nazis, number one. Nazis, <laughs> Nazis, Nazis, Nazis. <laughs> Head has come off. <laughs> Let's join the farmer's party, shall we? <laughs> no, we're, we're just going for a waz. Thanks. <laughs> which means pee. I was an agnostic, which is, you know, always a good place to be, in case he is there, and you go, no, I really did, I was with you, I was, you know. <laughs> I decided I'm an atheist or non-theist, I just don't believe in the floaty boat. And, yep. <laughs> Apparently there are a billion people who don't believe in God in the world, so quite a big sort of uh, congregation, I don't know if that's the right word, is it? Quite a big group, if we could all get together and do nothing. <laughs> What's he doing? If there is a God, he has more than one son. I'm pretty sure of that. I think Jesus proves that. Asus, Bezus, Jesus, 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 Ephesus, Jesus. <laughs> Just logic, yeah? Hus, Isis, Jesus, Kesus, Elis, Elis. Pisus, Pisus did deliveries. Pisus. <laughs> Jesus, always fucking around. Fuck off, Jesus. He's fucking tied me bits together. <laughs> Caesar was a Roman emperor. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Dictator, I should say. Technically. And then uh, Beezus covered in bees. <laughs> so, yes, does God, God must be crazy. I just, well, the beginning of the world, right? Beginning of the world is 4,500 million years ago. If you're very religious, it's 6,000 years ago. They're on a totally different <laughs> wicket. I just, I can't go with the religious boys, because the science boys, they've got glasses, they've got anoraks, they've got petri dishes, they've got Bunsen burners with two speeds. That one and that one. Da -da -da. <laughs> They're working at it. They're looking at magnetic fields. 4,500 million years ago, the world... Place your bets, place your bets. Start spinning. We turn up five million years ago. Why the long pause? If a god created the earth and wanted the seventh day for prayer, why the long pause, as the barman said to the bear? 
And the bear replied, because I got them stuck in the lift door. <laughs> it's an old joke from the beginning of time. <laughs> So, now the dinosaurs, I thought between us and the beginning of time that dinosaurs ruled the Earth during this bit. No, dinosaurs right up close to us, 165 million years, so a long time, we've been doing five, they did 165, and the dinosaurs are crap. <laughs> 165 million years of these bastards, they all got up in the morning, and all of them, without exception, even the flying ones, they got up in the morning and they just went, Rah! That's it. There's no other bit. There's no... Later on, they did some serious work. They're just big dogs. And not friendly, not with the licky face friendly stuff. They're rubbish. Except the raptors. I must admit, the raptors, they are, you know, in the Spielberg film, those raptors, they got in, they opened the door, they're quite clever. They downloaded porn from... <laughs> They were playing card games and shit. I don't know what they were doing. But they seem quite clever. And they look at the about our height as well. You put a little pork pie hat, little small, little small trilby type hat on a raptor. And I think, you know, it looks like one of us. Could pass as one of us. Is this your car, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Do you realize how fast you were going? <laughs> 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 Uh, very busy. <laughs> I realize you're very busy, but it, there's rules. <laughs> you're doing 53 miles an hour. <laughs> 53! Uh, 45. <laughs> no, it's 53. I've got a, a finger. Laughing at your own jokes. <laughs> Could you show me your license? Ah, look, it's a raptor. It's a raptor. Sarge, Sarge, Sarge. What's Sarge? There's always extra police in your. Sarge. Sarge, give me the bazooka. I never knew how to end that scene. <laughs> so I just kill things with bazookas now. I got that from you. <laughs> it's kind of an American foreign policy thing. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good to see you. All right, bye. <laughs> Why'd you kill him? I didn't know what to say. Ding, 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 ding. What, what, yes, and then. So dinosaurs, dinosaurs, crapola. Uh, and they didn't pray. No dinosaur churches. We're pretty damn sure. We've talked to a lot of people who dig things out of ground. And they said no dinosaur. Very few dinosaur vicars or priests going, You used to do that when you had to go to church. You go in, and then some people go down and do praying on their own. You go, well, What are you doing? He hasn't started yet, getting something early. Oh, you want to go to heaven, don't you? I don't think I'm going to heaven, by the way, guys. Anyway, so. And then dinosaurs, oh, welcome to today's congregation. Now sing him 409, all things bright and beautiful. <laughs> Great and small, <laughs> all things wise and wonderful. They don't live on the planet at the moment. <laughs> Who would make that? What god would create monsters for 165 million years that just go rawr? A god on crack cocaine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jesus. 
Jesus, 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 look, look at these crazy ones. <laughs> Dad, they're monsters. I thought I'd start off with monsters. You've done nothing for four billion years and they're monsters. You've got to try this stuff. <laughs> it's called crack. <laughs> Obviously, after 165 billion years, one said, come on. Now. <laughs> Missed. <laughs> oh, that'll work. <laughs> Who did that with my dinosaurs? It wasn't me, it was Beezus, Enzus. I didn't fucking do anything. Enzus, Elzus, Kazus. Get Zensus over here. I'm called Zesus. They're fucking in England now. <laughs> the EZ pass, the EZ pass. I, as we say Z, so the EZ pass, as I kept going through the tunnel, and going, the EZ pass, the e, what the fuck is it called, the EZ pass? <laughs> Could not get that for a few years. <laughs> EZ pass, the EZ pass, the EZ pass, the EZ pass, the EZ pass. Bloke called EZ built it. Oh. <laughs> that must have been the, 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 the what are they called? The, uh, who are the guys on the boats? <laughs> who? <laughs> what? <laughs> who? No, the guys who came over in the Plymouth Rock. <laughs> Pilgrims, Pilgrims, thanks. <laughs> this is scripted, this is scripted. All those people telling me stuff, I planned for that to happen. I can't remember what I was going to say now. No, when they come, obviously the pilgrims, they got on the boat and they said, all right, fuck Z, okay? We're not going to say Z anymore. We're going to say Z, all right? And then we can do the whole EZ pass. It'll make sense, all right? <laughs> come on, we're going to talk like this now. Yeah! <laughs> we're gonna... Woo! Yeah! <laughs> we're going to pray in such an extreme way that maybe we'll set fire to witches. Yeah! Salem, that sounds good. Let's head up there. <laughs> when Salem happened, we weren't doing anything. We were being really nice. <laughs> so, dinosaurs, bye-bye. We turn up five million years ago, and it gets interesting around the Stone Age. Before the Stone Age, I'm not sure how we hunted, because we didn't have stones to hit things with. So, <laughs> it must have just been... <laughs> You know, and, and, and sometimes an ox, there's an ox stuck in the mud. We can kill it and eat. Guys, I'm starving. Help me. Where is everyone? Fuck it. I'll beat him. Hurt my hand. I'll I'll oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Stupid stone. That'll work. Hi. <laughs> You're stuck in the mud. God. It's, it's March for you, and it just, it's just rainy season. It's April, rainy, I don't know. What, we haven't got words for it yet. <laughs> Is that a badger? <laughs> yes! Guys, guys. What is it, Steve? What is it? I've invented something. What? <laughs> ah. That's genius. I thought. We should call it something. Actually, this could be the beginning of an age. Do you realize that? <laughs> well, that's what I thought. We'll call it the age of big things that fall over when hit by small, dense things that are much denser on the periodic table. <laughs> Stone Age. Stone Age, yeah, that's more pithy. Yeah. So the Stone Age began probably on a Tuesday at about half three. And stones were used as hitting tools, cutting tools. You could cut the skin off an animal that no longer needed it. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> it's very good. I'm go. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I will wear it with pride. <laughs> People of these caves. <laughs> People. <laughs> People of the caves where I li live by the hill with the thing. <laughs> I have killed, and now I wet. Steve, you're going to hang it up till it dries. 
Otherwise, you're just going to be Lord of the Fly. <laughs> Shut up, Piggy. <laughs> oh, oh, now everyone thinks you're very literate now. <laughs> thinks you've read the book that you got for Christmas. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Doing a show at Madison Hexagonal Arbery. <laughs> so, the Stone Age began. Now, stone napping is the art of getting a stone, looking for the faults in the stone, and you chip away. It's not just a ha haphazard chipping thing. You chip away with the natural faults in the stone, and then you make arrowheads and axe heads and stuff like that. And they believe that stone napping, the art of it, was passed on with the use of language. They think that language was developed to pass this on about 100,000 years ago. Now, before language, I don't see how you can have religion. I think we've been searching for God ever since then, but before that, you can't have a God or religion, I think. This is my analysis here, because how can you articulate a vengeful God, a merciful God, with no words? How can you go, hey, what you do? What you do? And I have learned all this stuff through Wikipedia. <laughs> yes. Now, people frown and moan a bit about Wikipedia. Oh, the information can be tampered with. But before Wikipedia, we just had conversations that went like, how do you make jam? Steve, Freddy, Sally, Mr. Mingy, Lady Bad Crumble, <laughs> Kenny, Rogers, two people. <laughs> and if they didn't know, if all your friends didn't know, that was it. You wouldn't know about jam. You, you wouldn't join a library and get the books. You just oh, forget it. But now you can look up on Wikipedia. Jam Wikipedia goes, Jam was invented in 1487 by Mr. and Mrs. Jam. <laughs> and after about five lines, you get bored out of your mind, if you notice. <laughs> and then there's something written blue, and it's underlined, and you click on it, it goes, Helicopters! Helicopters are <laughs> invented in 1783. Mr. and Mrs. Helicopter, often used to transport jam around. <laughs> helicopters, spoons! Spoons often make helicopters out of spoons if you're really clever. <laughs> And sometimes you click on a blue thing and it says, there is no page for this thing. And we go, why did you put it in blue? <laughs> Don't put it in blue if you haven't got a page. Because we have trained, self-trained we are. Like, like Pavlov's dog, remember? Pavlov would ring a bell and the dog would make a Pavlova. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Pavlov would go, that's a bit crap. And the dog go, I've got no thumbs. <laughs> but we learn about this stuff all on our computers. I have an Apple Macintosh computer. You may have a PC. It doesn't really matter. It does really. Um, <laughs> is that the future wars? It's going to be people coming up and hitting each other with computers. But Apple Macintosh, you know, it's very smooth and sexy. You can touch it and have sex with people, and they're fine. And you're tip-tapping away these days, and the thing comes and says, would you like a software update? And you go, yeah, I don't see one. It's like a latte thing. So you just carry on working and we'll update it while you're doing it. Okay. Would you like to know details of the software update? You go, no. <laughs> or sometimes you go, yeah, and it goes, and you go, I don't know what that means. It's just <laughs> updating security, oh, that's pretty good. Spoon bending monkey chumps, and they go, oh, I don't know. okay, I'll take them all. And then it puts up the blue line. The blue line of time appears on our screens. And the blue line controls our lives. It has is, it is controlled time in a way that Einstein never believed possible. <laughs> For we're sitting there tapping away and it says eight minutes to download, seven minutes to download, six minutes to download, eight minutes to download, <laughs> two minutes to download, nine hours to download, <laughs> six seconds to download, eight minutes to download. Einstein would have gone, what the f... <laughs> E, e does not equal mc squared. <laughs> e equals pn to the five times 10 to the monkey nine. And then it says, OK, download. All the numbers count out. And then it does that stripey one. And it goes, oh, thinking about it, thinking about it. Oh, I don't know. Shall we give him the update? I don't know. I think about it. It's like someone's putting things in drawers and shit. And, and before you can get the update, it says, sign a new agreement with iTunes. And I don't know about you, but I have signed many agreements with iTunes. <laughs> I don't know what they want from us anymore. Don't they realize we agree with them? 
They must be paranoid at iTunes going, we must ask them again. <laughs> One more time. If they really, truly, we've asked them 38 times, no one more. I'm just not sure if they agree with us. And they have made us liars. We cannot tell the truth anymore. You cannot reprimand your children. No, Johnny, you said you, you didn't have a biscuit, but those crumbs on your face, and you did have a biscuit. You have lied, but you said you had read the terms and conditions. <laughs> when you tick that box. It was too quick for you to read the terms and conditions. You read it in the quick. <laughs> the truth is, no one in this room has read the terms and conditions. <laughs> no one in New York has read the terms and conditions. No one in, in the universe. Even God has not read the terms and conditions. That's probably the big gap between the beginning of the earth and when we fucking turned up. He was reading the terms and conditions of the thing he'd just made. Because anything could be on the terms and conditions. Anything could be on there. We will take your buttocks and sell them to the Chinese. Fine. We're going to rearrange your toes and number them. Yes, yes. We're going to put your underpants in hedges around the world. Yes, fine. Because you get to that point, you want the update. You didn't know what it was, but now you fucking want it. Give me a fucking update. And then you get the update, and nothing has changed. <laughs> if you have a PC, I think it's a very similar thing. You open the computer, you switch on the computer, you put the handle in, and you turn the handle. <laughs> then in a loud voice, in a clear voice, you have to say, chocks away, and they pull away wooden wedges from your computer, and it begins to rumble and a man walks ahead of you with a red flag, <laughs> then you put on the 78 record and on the needle, and an opera singer tells you about the updates. <laughs> I've worked out, by the way, anyone can do opera. Just get a huge PA system, an aircraft hanger, and a microphone. But anyway, we were hunter-gatherers, and, and we were killers, we were killers. And I think we have decided, without the power of a god telling us, just naturally, you know, just decided that killing is not necessarily good. Because people in the old days, like assassins, very interestingly, they used to take hashish to alter the mind state to go off and do killings. And that's where the word assassin comes from. They took hashish, and they were initially called hashashins. <laughs> this is true, this is in Wikipedia, so do check it out. It's even on the West Wing, if you watch that. I saw an episode. It is. It's true. Yeah. But there was. So obviously someone was going, help yourself to hashish, and then we'll go and do hashish. <laughs> what? Are you sure? Because for my money, you know, it's the wrong drug to take before you go and do anything. <laughs> it's the right drug to do when you're going to do nothing. Surely more cokey, speedy type drugs rather than... <sighs> Unless someone's saying, we're going to knock off a Mars bar factory. <laughs> I am in position. <laughs> oh, what? I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. I've got a briefcase. I'm on the roof. I just hope it's the right roof. This is a lot of roofs. Hang on, hang on. I'm putting it together. Pride, part B, the things. Glue wing to fuselage. <laughs> Pie transfers. Spitfire Mark Knight. What the fuck? This is Airfix. <laughs> Hang on, I got the wrong instructions. I'm gonna test it. <laughs> All right, got some good news and bad news. Uh, good news is it works. Bad news, it's not a gun. It's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Should I throw it at him? No, it's not very accurate, but it's got a fantastic element of surprise. <laughs> then there's the 
the nature of killing, of war. Nowadays, we have films and television. We can get maybe not a visceral sense of what war is like, but we get an emotional sense. Back in the old days, we had a famous battle in England called the Battle of Hastings, 1066, a thousand years ago, almost exactly. And you were either at that battle or forget it. You hadn't got a clue what was going on. You had to look at a tapestry to find out what went on there. <laughs> the Bayer tapestry they made. Weavers were photojournalists of the day. They were, the, they were obviously at the front line going, come on! Don't look at the weavers. Don't look at the weavers. Just keep moving. Weave, motherfucker. More red thread. Bring up red thread. It's a battle, for God's sake. Just can you slow down a bit? Going too far? Shoot someone in the eye. We've already done that panel, would you? William, give him a big wave. Give him a good haircut. These haircuts are fucking weird. Around the time of Henry VIII, one of our more famous kings, the six wives of Henry VIII, he kept going through them like a strange marrying man. <laughs> First one was Catherine of Aragon, second one was Anne Boleyn. By the time of Anne Boleyn, they were paparazzi. Weavers were paparazzi. All right, Anne, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> you're, gonna marry, you're gonna marry Henry, are you? Right. Just push your breasts up just a little bit more. <laughs> what about your sister? Is she gonna marry him? Ooh, that'll be big of me. Big of her too. Hang on, I'm showing this to my leg. Get you, hang on, keep your hair on. Keep your head on. <laughs> I've shown this to my leg again. Is that a problem? So we were hunters, we were gatherers. I would have been a hunter, not a gatherer. Because gathering seems incredibly boring. Gathering is essentially going 12, 13, 12, 13, 12, 11, 12. Fucking hell, I'm not getting anywhere. How many you got? I got three. <laughs> Warriors are gonna kill us when they get back. And then they return. We have killed buffalo and bison and beavers and badgers and balloons and, and bees, which is very difficult. <laughs> How many berries do you have? A total of seven. <laughs> it's a bit shit. We've been away for two moons. That's almost three years or something. <laughs> Never mind, make us a smoothie and we shall share. That's what we lived on, raw meat and smoothie. <laughs> but then the ice left, the ice fucked off and said, good luck, invent fridges. <laughs> so the ice went and then we became farmers. A farmers is a step up in civilization and a massive step down in sexiness. It really isn't sexy, you know? There's no farming films, that's how you can tell. There's no Bruce Willis in Farm Hard. Dun, 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 dun. Farm Hard 3. This time it's arable. Dun, dun, dun. They've taken over the Nakatomi farm, man. Bruce McLean, he's in the roof. He's got all the manure. They've got no methane to do any the bang thing. It wouldn't work, you see. And farmers, they grow crops. We eat the crops. We need farmers. They do this wonderful job. But it's not exciting, so that's why they keep animals. I'm pretty sure that farmers keep animals to make it more exciting for rock and roll, because they keep the noisy ones. Have you noticed old McDonald's farm full of noisy animals? <laughs> they don't keep otters, they don't keep beavers, they don't keep weasels, they don't keep rabbits. None of the quiet ones. All the quiet animals are, oh, fuck off, quiet animals. We want big, barky, noisy ones. Cows go moo and sheep go bar and dogs go woof and cats go ping and... Chickens go cock a doodle doo, which is stupid. <laughs> it's just such an odd noise. It's supposed to wake you up in the morning, but they do it all day. I've been near farms. I've been quite near farms. And if I was a farmer, I'd go nuts. I'd just wedge a trumpet on their face. <laughs> and then they'd go. And the farmer's wife go, what is that? There's jazz chicken. <laughs> the fuck is a jazz chicken? A uh, trumpet fell on his face. <laughs> fell off a shell? No, well, I wedged it on his face because he was making <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I want to get some music. But he's got no lips. How does he make an embouchure? <laughs> I sewed bacon rind onto his beak. That is insane. But that should be on Discovery Channel. Because then every morning you'd be woken up like... And 
And then donkeys would get their tails go. And passing frogs, maybe, might stand on their tongues, maybe, and go bung, 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 bung. Don't know quite how frogs get into a farm situation, but I was looking for long tongued animals. Maybe that's what happened to Baby G. He was born and in the manger and bung, bung. Three wise men came. Oh, it's a jazz club, that is. <laughs> now, Noah, he knew about animals. Noah built an ark and there was a flood. They say that God told him to build an ark. But I don't know, I think a number of us in this room, if it was raining and there was a huge flood about to happen, I think a number of us would have said, fuck it, I'm building a boat. You know, he built a boat, and it's not, it wasn't an ark, it was a boat. An ark, it always looks silly, because it's a big U-shape with a little shed on the top, and out of that, there's a lion and tiger doing this. <laughs> and uh, obviously, you never see any of the compartments or anything that went on, or who, where the toilets were. <laughs> so he made a boat, he made a boat. What did he put in the boat? His family. What else? All the animals he could find. Did he put two of every animal in the world on the boat? No. How can I be so sure? Try it. <laughs> I'm happy to be proved wrong on this. I just need Discovery Channel to say, and today we're gonna do two of everything on this boat. Let's have a look. And then let's visit the toilets later. It will be a nightmare. Everything had to be on the boat, from two dung beetles to two giant squid and everything in between. All the fish, they never get mentioned. It was supposed to kill two, you know, kill all the bad things and start again with two of everything, including the fish. I mean, bad sharks, sharks are bad. Very few good sharks. Very few sharks going, we found a child. <laughs> he was thrashing around in that area of danger zone, you see. We thought we'd bring him in, yes. Well, it's a new thing we're doing, we're trying to. I'm in public relations, yes. <laughs> I'm Sharky the Friendly Shark. Sharky the Friendly Shark. You've seen my program, maybe. No, he only had one leg to begin with, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> that ark would be a nightmare. Two of everything on the boat, giant squid sticking out of cupboards going, is she there? <laughs> is Mrs. Noah there? There's no towels. I can't find any towels. I mean, minibar doesn't work. It's not stocked. Some sort of non stocking thing. Well, it's got socks in there. I don't know. Oh, for fuck's sake. Giant squid diary. Day one, long time ago. Dear TripAdvisor, <laughs> got to the ark. Everything rather damp, a little disappointing. Seen two cats, two dogs, two squirrels, two mice, two chipmunks. Eat them later as hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Must Wikipedia what that means. <laughs> Just the etymology. Seem to be running out of ink. <laughs> then there's the two by two thing. That doesn't work. All right, there's Noah and his sons. All right, Shem, Ham, Japheth. Here we go. They come two by two. Two lions, two tigers, two cats, two dogs, two squirrels, two mice, two llamas, two unicorns, two zebras, two chipmunks, two of those things. Um, how many is that so far? Uh, so far, two lions, two tigers, Dad. <laughs> Should be... Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it wouldn't work, would it? Lions and tigers, we need everything. It's like putting four students on a boat with a load of cake mix. <laughs> Do you remember cake mix? You made it as a kid, the first time you made it, and you made it, and you put the stuff in, and you didn't put the stuff in. And now your mum probably put the stuff in, and you did all this stuff, and then it was poured out, and then they said you could lick the spoon, and you went, Oh my God, it's a nightmare! <laughs> is, is this heaven? Did God, is it... <laughs> And there's a whole plate of it, and then it was put into the fire, and it came out less good than it went in. <laughs> it was genius when it went in, and it came out. Ew. The whole arc story doesn't make sense. And when, after 40 days and 40 nights of rain, which is only 40 days of rain, isn't it? 40 days and 40 nights. The nights are implicit, aren't they? It's all built in. 
I mean, you know, when you go to hotels, I'm going to stay for three days. Will you stay for the night? <laughs> After a month and a bit of rain, they'd be there from the Bible. We're here from the Bible. It's the day when the ark, the ark is just coming into view. 40 days, 40 nights of rain. Wonderful welcome the audience from around the world here on BBC World Service. And uh, <laughs> when we're going to have a word with Noah and his wife. And here he comes. Uh, Mr. Noah, could you just, could you just tell me... <laughs> could you just, I, 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 sorry, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't seem to be able to stop him there. He's a, obviously some sort of reception he has to go to. And the Lions and the Tigers come here. Lady, hey, lads, how was it? How was it on the... <laughs> I can't seem to stop the Lions and the Tigers either. Obviously, maybe going to the toilet or something. Um, not sure what all that's about. So we'll wait for one of the other animals. There's a lot of... I can see on the top deck what looks like strawberry jam. A lot of strawberry jam. <laughs> so they obviously had a lot of sandwiches. And here's a squirrel, Mr. Squirrel, Mr. Squirrel, could you, could you tell me how, how, how it was on, on the ark? <laughs> it was a nightmare, man. <laughs> it, was a nightmare. it was the biggest nightmare. Those stripy bastards, they killed everyone, man. They're all dead, they're all dead. There's no one there. Oh my God, I hid in a biscuit tin, man. It was fucking insane. <laughs> Were they chocolate hobnobs? I don't fucking know. What the hell are you on about, you biscuit freak? Well, what happened to your wife? Where's your other boat? She got away, man, on a boat with an owl and a pussycat. <laughs> Did they take some money and plenty of honey? I don't know, I didn't see. I think I took a Gatling gun, some soap and a razor and some chain mail and, and some iodine. <laughs> That's not very poetic. It wasn't poetry, man. They were fucking escaping from the... Ma Who are you? <laughs> this is the BBC Word Service. Broadcasting from some fucking where. <laughs> I have to tell you about giraffes, because giraffes are interesting. They're one of the silent ones. They don't have a danger call. If a giraffe, when it's spending its time in Africa, if it sees a tiger, it would experience two emotions, fear and surprise. Two of the emotions of the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> As... Monty Python have taught us fear because it is a tiger and surprise because there are no tigers in Africa. <laughs> What's it doing there? It must be on holiday. <laughs> I've tried this scene with lions and it doesn't fucking work, so just go with me, okay? <laughs> so it sees a tiger and the, the giraffe turns and there's no noise. There's no. There's no. There's no danger sound. If they had a jazz chicken around his neck, at least he'd go. And then they'd all retreat in twos, break into fours, pull back. This joke is very funny, 100 years ago. <laughs> back in the early 1800s when a lot of that shit was going on. It's really killed. <laughs> anyway, there's none there. All that giraffes can do, if you look in Wikipedia, giraffes can cough. So they must cough using the ancient British method of coughing to express alarm, distress, and the end of empires. <laughs> so the giraffe sees the danger, turns and goes, <laughs> at the giraffes. There's a tiger over there. <laughs> There's a bloody great big tiger over there. <laughs> tiger at four o'clock. Uh, 
What am I talking about? What was I talking about? I am talking about, ladies and gentlemen, what is the meaning of life? I don't know if there is a meaning of life. I think, I think there isn't a meaning of life. Why are we here? I have no idea why we're here. But while we're here, we may as well do civilization. <laughs> Which just means being a little bit British. You know? A little bit, good morning, how are you? <laughs> Walk on. Can't stand the man myself. Civilization kicked off with the Egyptians and the Sumerians. I don't know much about the Sumerians because I haven't Wikipedia'd them. But the Egyptians, they did stuff. They worshipped the sun god Ra, which is slightly more logical than worshipping an invisible god, Chris. <laughs> as the Christians do. If you're a Christian, you should be worshipping Chris, shouldn't you? Dear Chris, I'm a Christian. And, you know? They quite like that, but they don't really like that. Okay. But, so, but he's invisible. But the sun god is there. He's there every day. Well, the sun god, but the sun is every day. And it's slightly more logical. And they call, I think they call him Ra. And they had a song for Ra. Hurrah for Ra. He lives us over there. He comes up over there. And he goes out over there. And we chase him on a camel, but it really goes so far. Hurrah for Ra. He's a bit of a star. <laughs> They're just applauding because I sang a song. That's how easy it is. <laughs> These singers get away with a hell of a lot. They go ding dong bang, ping pong bang, fuck a duck. Hey, motherfucker! <laughs> we have to sweat. <laughs> that song's on sale also on the CD. <laughs> the fuck a duck motherfucker song. <laughs> Along with the ra hurrah for ra. <laughs> I think hurrah for ra would work. They also had a written language. The ancient Egyptians had a written language, which was a nightmare for newsreaders. Here is the news in ancient Egypt. Dog, dog with the cat's face, cat with the dog's face. <laughs> man with the human monkey's face, man with the thing. Eye with legs, a pot with legs. Two dogs, a rabbit with an enormous, what is that? I think a cat, a dog, some sort of thing, a man with a, one of those. It seems the orgy in the zoo continues <laughs> into its fourth century. Here is Janine with the weather. Thank you, it'll be sunny forever. Thanks, Janine. <laughs> um, now we're going over to our studio in ancient Greece. <laughs> now the Greeks, they're more fun than the Egyptians. I, I, I'd like the ancient Egyptians to be, they did some great stuff, but the, the ancient Greeks, they get into it. The Athenians, they, they invent democracy. It's a Greek word, demos means people. Ocracy is a kind of inflatable cat seat. We think, we're not sure, the translation is very tricky. <laughs> they had city-states, the, the Athenians, the Thebians, the, the, the Bingy-Bangians, the, the, the Spartans. The Spartans were fantastic. The Spartans were, you know, elite troops, a nation of elite troops, or city-states of elite troops. Bastards, complete nutbags. They attacked the country next to them, enslaved those people for 400 years, and humiliated them for 400 years. Bastards, really. And they, the men, of course, were, you know, the Spartan men. Spartan women, Spartan children, Spartan dogs, woof, Spartan cats, meow. Spartan moles, Spartan sheep, shh, silent. They were ninjas, they were ninja sheep. They would wear bandanas around the heads with Japanese writing. But they didn't understand because they were sheep. And they would, they would creep up on their prey. They would creep up, no, they'd creep up on their predators. Sheep would creep up on their predators. How insane is that? They were just mad, they had signals. They would just creep along in the dead of night. Sheep going. <laughs> they creep, they creep up on the wolves, and the wolves will go, whoa! These are sheep. We eat sheep. Is this delivery? <laughs> but the sheep, they had no fear. 
They would stand up on their hind legs and they'd remove a rusty blade from out of their fobs and spots. <laughs> and they would shear themselves in front of the wolf. <laughs> Pull up the skin on their legs, just a little bit. <laughs> and the wolves will go, this is all wrong. <laughs> Grab their clothes and run. <laughs> so the wolves in sheep's clothing would run down the hill. <laughs> That's where it began. They'd run into the local markets and they'd order smoothies and never pay. <laughs> Why didn't you take their money? They said they'd invoice me. <laughs> there were wolves in sheep's clothing. And it started a whole spate of that. Wolves in sheep's clothing, dogs in cat's clothing, rabbits in buffalo's clothing, <laughs> mice in ant's clothing, and voles in mole's clothing. And voles are very small moles, so voles in mole's clothing is kind of... Flew. And then moles in voles' clothing, which is much more... The Spartans fought a famous battle, the Battle of Thermopylae, made into a film by Shirley Temple, <laughs> called On the Good Ship Lollipop. <laughs> it's an anagram, On the Good Ship Lollipop, Battle of Thermopylae. It's exactly the same letters. It's almost exactly the same letters. <laughs> Shirley Temple, of course, known many years ago for Mop top songs. I'm a little mop top, I'm a tip top top. I've got a mop up on my top. <laughs> they said, you know, what, what do you want to do in this film? She said, I want to kill people in this film. I want to stab them with forks and spoons. I'm like, oh, ah. But surely you do mip top 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 mip top. I want to fucking. And she was very powerful in those days. Not in Hollywood terms, but just big four. And <laughs> a lot of spinach. And so they let her do the film, and she filmed it on the good ship Lollipop and the Battle of Thermopylae. Those two merged together on the... Lollipop. They filmed it, they edited it, they tested it on kids in America. The kids exploded. <laughs> And so they took it back and they re-edited it and they took all the violence out. And now, if you watch on the good ship Lollipop, you can't tell that it was once about the Battle of the Battle. <laughs> Except in some scenes, Shirley Temple's just got a little bit of blood coming out of him. Oh, I do like the people. <laughs> and her left eye looks all wrong. Like it's seen too much. <laughs> I love you, I love the birth of horror. The birth of men. Singing songs, sunshine, sunshine. Benny bodies piled up. <laughs> lollipops, lollipops, spikes. <laughs> but the Spartans were crazy. Tactically very clever. They would oil themselves before battle so they could never be taken prisoner. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fighting fish over here. And strategically very clever. They would get the, they, they were fighting the Persians, you see. They got the Persians to attack in a very narrow place, which was the corridor of a student union party. <laughs> get all the beer out the back. And this is 300 Spartans against 10,000 Persians, 100,000 Persians. No one knows how many Persians. Scholars now think it was all the Persians. <laughs> if you were around on that day, you could just nip into Persia and help yourself to cats and carpets. Man, what are you doing here? Put the carpet in the back, man. Forget the cat. <laughs> Don't understand that. <laughs> so yeah, now the Greeks they fought in a in a organized group of battle, a group of men, a rectangular group called the Phalanx. And uh, Alexander the Great's dad, his name was Phil. And <laughs> Phil of Macedonia. You married him, excellent. 
just a guy called Phil or actually Philip of Macedonia? Because that's just, they're different things. <laughs> so, and he said, I know, I'll give the phalanx 18 foot spears, which in metric terms is 7,000 meters. <laughs> uh, long spears, right? So you couldn't get at them. You couldn't get at them because they had 18-foot spears. The only way to get at them is if one of your groups sacrificed himself to break up the group. such a good day. <laughs> it works, it works. 18 foot spear. God, he's heavy. <laughs> Wiggle him down the other end. Huh? Wiggle him down the other end. like a really lonely game of table football. <laughs> boom, boom, shit. He's caught on the stopper. It's not a stopper, it's a spearhead. I don't know, I've never seen the other end. reminds me of something. Oh, it gives me an idea. If we ever put screens on the front of chariots, something like this could remove the excess water from the screen. <laughs> what? It's just an idea. <laughs> Fucking bonkers, you are. <laughs> okay, that's better. I can hold it closer to the fulcrum. A little bit intimidating. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, I don't know. And then the Romans came. And the Romans, they cut through the whole phalanx with the short swords. How did they do it with the short swords? They became bacon slicers, ladies and gentlemen. They went. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on! My fucking spear! <laughs> Bong! <Bastard>. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> Very fine. <laughs> Very fine. <laughs> hey man, what are you doing here? <laughs> fucking loads of them. Do you, brute? <laughs> Can I keep this? Can I keep this? No, it's mine. Fuck off. No. Crave no. goods. The Romans, they took over everything. They could do that. They had aqueducts, viaducts. They could move ducks around faster than anyone ever had. 
And the Romans did all this with a language that we know from school is silly. <laughs> it's a silly billy language. It has a nominative, a vocative, accusative, a genitive, a dative, an ablative. Fuck off. <laughs> How did they do so much with a language so silly? How did they do that? When Hannibal, the famous general Hannibal from Carthage, whose father was called Havilcar, a famous general as well, and so Havel, uh, Hannibal, he knew what he was doing. He was a trained general, and he came with revenge in his heart, and he crossed across the Mediterranean, through Spain, up over the Alps on elephants, which is crazy, and you know the story, so you go, yeah, he came on elephants, but it's like coming on pandas. <laughs> yeah, it's that weird. And he did this, I mean, how did the elephants get over the Alps? They must have been going, fuck you. Yeah. It's all right for you, Dumbo, you can fly. <laughs> and then they must have fallen. Only 60 started off, only one made it. There must have been just one elephant who, when they started falling down the Alps, most of them dying tragically, just one, one elephant who just had, had it, just... Let the bomb Look at that fucking elephant! <laughs> Extreme elephant, baby! Look at him go! With his tail, with his tail, his trunk over his shoulder, <laughs> like a businessman's tie. <laughs> Hannibal going, I'm with him! But it must have scared the shit out of the Romans. The Romans hadn't lost battles, and now they were losing. And how did they get the message out? Because the military, Roman military, famed for its organization with a language that was silly, silly, silly. <laughs> how did they do this? Messengers come running. Centurion, Centurion, Centurioni, Centurion, Centuriatus, Salve, Centurion, Salwate, 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 Centurioni, Salwate, Centurianus. Quid quid quad, quid quid quad, quid quid quad, quid quid quad, quid 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 Nusum porta tre portan porta. Nusum Hannibal Artis. Hannibal Artis? Hannibal Aurum? Hannibal Eben? Hannibal. Hannibal Arbum. River Armus. Hannibal a River Artis, mein Herr. A River Armus. A River Artis? A River Deci? No, that's a bottle. Veni vidi vici. Veni vidi fucking vici. See, mein Herr. Veni vidi vici. Ah, for fuck's sake. Mit soldatus. Mit soldatus? We feel soldatus. Ins, 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 X, X, I, X, I, V, M, M, hang on. X, I, C, M, M, C, I, X, 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 I, D. Twelve? Multo soldatus, maximo soldatus, infinitatus soldatus. Whoa, 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 infinitatus soldatus, mathematicus, impossible artus. <laughs> Don't believe us, ask Pythagoras. <laughs> what? Infinitatus, fucking impossible artus. <laughs> I just tried this, fucking fingers fell off. Pi. Oh, thanks, mate. Und, 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 mein Herr, set foie, Hannibal uh, is coming round the mountains when he comes. <laughs> uh, it's coming round the mountains when he comes. Uh, it's coming round the mountains, coming round the mountains, coming round the mountains when he comes. <laughs> Singing. <laughs> Portare pink pajamas? Don't think so. <laughs> und, er kommt. 
mit Elefantheim. Quad the fuck. <lacht> Elefantheim erect. Elefantheim trade dangaroos. Descripto mako, willow, nio, io, duo. Front part is Elephantine, maximum squirrel, upside down is back to front is. Back part is biggest pig has ever seen us. Fucker duckers. Motherfuckers. Run, motherfuckers. Now that is half an hour of conversation. Now, here it is. Here it is in English. Here it is in English. Hannibal's coming. Hannibal, what with? Soldiers, how many? Lots, what else? Elephants, what are they? Pigs and squirrels, run. <laughs> Seven seconds. That's what happened. English, the language that you speak and I speak, this, 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 the language that's become the lingua franca, whatever the fuck that means around the world, it's taken off because on its basic level, it is terribly simple. You know, we have apple and apples. I want an apple, I'm gonna give you an apple, that apple came to me, I'll send you an apple, of the apple, to the apple, by the apple, but it's just fucking apple and apples. <laughs> and it would be apple orum, apple etis, apple artis, apple, fucking all that. <clears throat> Someone, one of us, years ago, a bunch of them got together, I don't know who it was, but clever, clever, clever. No masculine, is it masculine or feminine or new to the apple? It's a fucking apple. <laughs> Stop fucking around. <laughs> yeah. English language, it's crazy. Oh, in its simple level, in its more advanced level, English is very complicated, of course. If you said a, li a complicated line of English, so Mr. Stevenson transgressed the dictatorial nature of his surrogate friend when <laughs> he intimated the explosive nature of the conundrum. <laughs> That's quite complicated, isn't it? I don't know what the fuck it means, but, you know, it's just... <laughs> You try ad-libbing a difficult line. <laughs> they're difficult. That's why they're called difficult lines. There's a whole page on difficult lines. Lost everyone. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the, 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 the Romans, they all died in a chariot crash. Uh, <laughs> on the Appian Way. Where the Appian Way meets the B459, is that really nasty turning? See, all the Roman citizens were trying to, on the, they were on the chariot, they were trying to do that how many can you get in a mini thing. <laughs> and then suddenly the, the windscreen wipers failed because the hamster burnt out. <laughs> it could have happened. And so the classical thinking died in 410 of the common era. And then we went into the dark ages and the, and the dimgy ages and I can't really see ages. And then you got the medieval period, and then the medi-good period. <laughs> and then the medi-thinking in the triple century thing. And then you've got Renaissance and the Enlightenment. And Charles Darwin, in 18 past four, <laughs> Charles Darwin wrote that famous book, Great Expectations. <laughs> the story of an amoeba called Pip. <laughs> who went to stay at Lady Bad Crumble's house. And she had a very hot daughter. This daughter was not that good looking, she just lived on a radiator. <laughs> and Pip the amoeba said, will you marry me, hot daughter? And she said... <laughs> and he said, I say again, will you marry me, hot daughter? I'm too small to be crushed by your spiky heels. And she went... <laughs> and he said, you're just making that noise, it's not really working. <laughs> For I am a single-celled organization. She said, don't you mean organism? She said, both. We have formed an organization. <laughs> anyway, he showed it to his wife. His wife went, Charlie, this is shit. <laughs> you're losing the edge. Charlie Dickens, I don't think you're doing it anymore. He says, I'm not Charles Dickens. Who are you? I'm Charles Darwin. You don't live here. <laughs> and it was true. Charles Dickens and Charles Darwin lived two vowels away from each other <laughs> on Dictionary Lane back in Hobbiton, <laughs> just south of England. So it's a true story. So later on, in 18... <laughs> Charles Dickens wrote a very good version of Great Expectations, where the expectations were great. <laughs> and Charles Darwin wrote his famous book, which was called Monkey, 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 You. <laughs> and that was the book. 
it caused an outrage. An outrage in the monkey community. Monkeys were furious. <laughs> we're not linked to those human burks, they said. And monkeys were flinging their poo at anyone who would <laughs> stick a microphone in their face. And there was the monkey trial. You've heard the famous monkey trial? Charlton Heston was put on trial by monkeys. <laughs> and there he was sentenced to two monkey films <laughs> to be served back to back. The first film was called Planet Called Monkey Town. And the second one was called Let's All Go Back to Monkey Town with similar people and do similar things. <laughs> so, evolution. You can see evolution very clearly with fish. Fish fly. We don't fly. We're so bloody advanced. Fish fly. How did they get to actually fly themselves? They're in the sky. They must love it. They'll say, oh, it's brilliant up here. And they must stop in trees occasionally. And they stop in trees. When they stop in trees, birds will be in trees. And birds will be going, who the fuck are you guys? And they'll be going, we're the new fish on the block. And then it just becomes like West Side Story. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -ba. And the birds go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> and the fish going. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Fish can't do that, can they? So fish probably. And the birds going. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> you let me get. I was going to do it for now. <laughs> Anyway, that explains evolution quite well, I think. <laughs> then, there is creationism. Creationism is where God went shazam! <laughs> and created an iPhone application. <laughs> it could tell what music was being played as the world was created. But if I was God, I wouldn't do six days to make the Earth. I'd just go, <laughs> there it is, it's blue. Don't fuck it up. It took six days. It was like, you know, my dad made a train set for me and my brother when we were kids. I think it's like that. I think he was making a train set. God, six days. After about three days, small animals are going, who are you? And God, why are you taking so long? Are we there yet? Well, I fucked up a few of them. Have you seen Venus and Mercury? It's fucking crap there. We got no food. You didn't make this food. All oh, right, sorry, what are you, badgers? Badgers shall eat bok choy. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> Why not? Don't like it. It's all fair. It's like it died in the watery grave. For fuck's sake. All right, badgers shall eat asparagus. <laughs> no, that makes your pee smell weird. <laughs> well, who told you that? Wikipedia. All right, badgers eat creme brulee. All right, we would eat that. We would eat creme brulee, but you didn't brulee that. You just went, and it's creme. It's like toast. It's under. It's like weird. It's... I see badgers can be choosers. <laughs> you try and get groans and applause on the same joke. Now think why you why are you groaning? Because you've heard it before. <laughs> I think not. <laughs> New York, you may be New York, and you may have heard every fucking thing that's going, but you have not heard the creme brulee, asparagus, bok choy, badger, god creation joke. I don't think. I don't think. Anyway, it wasn't my joke. It was God's joke. They don't like you, God. <laughs> New York does not like you. Well, that's no surprise. <laughs> so, now creationism is there. Creationism, of course, is, has magic in there. But through the mind sieve of a Sarah Palin type woman, it turns. <laughs> yeah. But that kind of person, that kind of oh, 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 type person. You get this intelligent design word that you know in America and it's not really known in, in Europe. I don't know for the rest of the world. Intelligent design, we don't really use it, but it's quite clever because you look at humans and think, well, there's, an, there's some sort of design thing going on. Well, it works and it's complicated. It's complicated and it works, does not mean intelligent design. There's also cancer. What part of intelligent design is cancer? Eh? Just crazy. Cows have four stomachs. What part of intelligent design is that? 
when we all have one stomach, so they could just, they eat, cows eat it and bring it back up and eat it and bring it back up and eat it. When it comes up for the fourth stomach, cows should be going. <laughs> I don't know why this came back up. It just it should have gone the other way, really. Are you okay, Daisy? Cows should be throwing up, mostly. Two-thirds of all cows in all fields should be going... Blah, blah, blah. I mean, real proper throwing up, not like film throwing up, where they throw up once and that's it. Throwing up is an opera. <laughs> you can't understand a word anyone's saying, and it goes on forever. <laughs> and there's at least five, three to five acts, aren't there? There's all... And then there's a whole period of... <sighs> Do you want a glass of water? No, fuck off. <laughs> and when you throw up, everything wants to come out. Your entire body is saying, abandon ship, abandon ship. Oh. If we didn't have an internal skeleton, your toes would be out there. Your body's going, what the fuck did you do? There's intelligent design for it. And the one rule that I found, which was do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. I can't do it all the time, I fuck it up, I get angry and stuff, and, but it's, it's, I think it's all you need. Treat others as you'd like to be treated yourself. Boom, if everyone did it tomorrow, boom, we'd, get, we'd make it. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, and I'm pretty damn sure it's in the Quran. It's called the Golden Rule, it's all you need. The Ten Commandments come from Moses, who was a charismatic individual. He was in, and he was here tonight, and he's dressed as a cow. <laughs> Now Moses, he was the one in the bed of reeds. He was brought up as he was a Hebrew person, brought up as an Egyptian, killed a slave owner, and then took off to hide because it was bad news in those days. And then he went up and he was a sh became a shepherd. So he's looking after the sheep, going, "Yes, yeah, Spartan sheep, they're crazy." Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Wear bandanas with Japanese writing. <laughs> what does it mean? No one knows. Not even Japanese. No, the Japanese forgotten. Suddenly, a bush caught fire. <laughs> Okay, come on, it's gone a bit weird, gone a bit biblical. Come on, lads, let's get out of here. And the bush that was on fire said, Moses, come back here. He said, oh, he knows my name. Hang on. <laughs> Don't accept sweets from children, all right? <laughs> what is it, O oh bush? Vocative. What is it, O oh bush? It's the only time you use the vocative. And the bush went, Moses, you must leave this place. I was leaving it, and you told me to come back <laughs> to tell me to leave, you stupid bush. You're like the last one we had. <laughs> no, I mean, you must, Moses, you must leave here in the short to midterm future on a geopolitical basis. Oh, hang on, no, you're totally different to the other one. He couldn't say that. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I will leave here on a geopolitical, th whatever you said. Now think about it. A burning bush told him to do this, and he did it. If you were down your way and you're walking down the road and a hedge, because a bush is a hedge, so a hedge just round. <laughs> an hedge called for. If the hedge then went, Steve. <laughs> hedge is talking to me. Hang on. What is it, oh hedge? Vocative. <laughs> you must leave this place. <laughs> leave this place and go to Timbuktu. I'll do it. <laughs> you must take everyone you've ever met. Of course. <laughs> I'll get them to pack. <laughs> and call the fire brigade as well. Thank you. <laughs> oh, for you, I see, right. But you wouldn't do it, would you? You wouldn't listen to a hedge. <laughs> he listened to a hedge. Why did God send a hedge on fire? Why not a hedge that's not on fire? Because then you could think, oh, there's someone in the hedge who had books and stuff and a map. <laughs> they believe it was a mistranslation, and a burning bush means he was on a volcanic mountain when he decided and had the epiphany moment and decided to just... Uh, mistranslation, because everything was written in Greek because of Alexander the Great, the Hellenic thing, and they do believe that... Uh, well, they know that the, word, the Greek, ancient Greek for virgin, the ancient Greek for young woman, was the same word. The whole Mary thing. So, 
a virgin had a baby, wow, start a religion, get some posters, do the curly thing. <laughs> or a young woman had a baby, wow, cigars, congratulations, have a rest. <laughs> Let's move on. Because I would say it takes away from the bloke. Because I think he really exists. I think the Jesus guy, the Yeshua guy, his real name was Yeshua, that before it was, you know, Helen, Hellenized into Jesus. He, I think he was a real bloke. I think he did stuff, and then he was said he was the son of a mystical thing, and that devalues what he did, you see. <clears throat> Moses obeys the burning bush, runs down and says, come on, lad, let's get out of here. Let's take all the Hebrew people, and they, I will lead you. I will lead you from this desert, and we shall go to a desert. <laughs> it sounds fantastically different. Let's do it. All right, we'll go tonight under the cover of frogs. <laughs> I'm sorry? Frogs, because there were 10 plagues that landed on Egypt, and one was a plague of frogs. And I'm sorry, but that is not a plague. You can't have a plague of frogs. You can only have more frogs than usual. <laughs> I don't have a fucking plague. A plague of flies, you can, a plague is a disease, isn't it? You know, a plague. So a plague of flies is a, is it a synonym, whatever the word is, because it's fly, flies, flies, a plague of flies. Okay, I go with that. Locusts, a plague of locusts. Frogs are on the floor. A plague, you'd have to, a plague of frogs. <laughs> the frogs are playing, are playing. Go, 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 go. Just sticking them down your shirt. It's a plague. <laughs> if that was from God, he had run out of ideas. Beezus, Jesus, Enzus, or another plague. We've had nine, Dad. Plague of Flies, plague of locusts, plague of cheese makers, a plague of helicopters. What the fuck? I want frogs. <laughs> yes, indeed. So they must have just said, look, there's lots of frogs, lads. Strap one on your head and let's run. <laughs> Loads of Hebrew people with frogs on their head ran to the town. And the ancient Egyptians said, Whoa, whoa. oh, I've been drinking far too much. <laughs> and they ran through the Red Sea because a giant squid held the water back. Good luck, lads. All right. Giant Squid Diary, day three million and nine. Helped the Hebrew people escape from ancient Egypt. Saw my old friend, Mr. Squirrel. Hey, man, what's going on here? Oh, God, I was enslaved in a fucking Egypt, man. It was a nightmare. I met up with this guy. <laughs> He's the manager of this band. Bang, 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 bang. Meow, 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 meow. I can't find my wife, though. Have you seen my wife? No, I haven't seen her. If, if you see my wife, will you call me? Do you have a number? Yeah, three. Okay. <laughs> oh. Early days. So then the Hebrew people wandered in the desert for 40 years. And if I had been with them after 23 years, I would have said, where are we going? <laughs> We're just wandering in the desert. I'll give you 17 more years, and that's it. And after 17, after 40 years, after 40 years, it was obviously going nuts. Everyone was going nuts. I'm going to have sex with my feet. <laughs> I'm going to cut my buttocks off and use them as headphones. <laughs> I'm going to fill myself with sand and sell myself to a taxidermist. <laughs> and Moses said, no, you can't do this. There are rules. There are no rules. All right, I'll get 10. <laughs> Just one would do fine. No, 10 it shall be. So he runs off and comes back the next day. Here they are. Number one, never piss in a toaster. <laughs> Number two, don't eat barbed wire. Number three, never put your poo on your hair. Number four, ding, 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 after eight o'clock. We're just making this up. <laughs> no, we want better rules. Rules you can write on rock, for fuck's sake. Rock rules. The three R's, all right. And he runs off. And this time he's gone for, mo for months. Months he's gone. They think he's been eaten by badgers. So what do they do? What would you do if your leader you follow for 40 years suddenly disappears and never comes back? They smelted metal. <laughs> That's absolutely what I'd do. I would fire up a thing and melt things down to make an effigy of a cow's friend. And nothing else to do, not try and find him or any shit like that or set up, you know, or go for help or shit, I'd smelt metal. That's my... <laughs> it's the me metallurgist in all of us. It's just that he came out of the
And it's really tricky stuff if you've seen Discovery Channel. If you just do a little bit of smelting and you say, look, a golden calf. They go, oh, that looks like a badger who's exploded. <laughs> That's like seven weasels attached together with each other. It's a calf or a dog or something. It's called Kenny. Let's worship it. <laughs> Dear Kenny, how are you? You've done great so far. Well, you haven't done much, but anyway, we're expecting big things of you. Please bring us plum cake and cheddar. And, uh, oh, and suddenly Moses came back and said, what the fuck? <laughs> Smelting metal. <laughs> I've got 10. And he had 10. And you don't need 10, but he had 10. One of which is, thou shalt have no God but the my God, the 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 God, which is, okay, oh, duh. I think that's, that shouldn't even be one. But then there's, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, which is built into do unto others, as you have, would have others do unto you. Do you want others to kill you or steal your stuff? No, so probably not, so don't steal. You know, it's self-policing. And then the other seven are all don't eat wood and stuff. I mean, no one can remember them, but there's one in there which is just a wild card thrown in, you know, like they put it in, you know, like in, in a contract just to make sure you're reading it that no one ever reads. <laughs> Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's ox. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thou shalt not really, really like thy neighbor's ox. Not steal it, kill it, shoot it, have sex with it, blow it out of a cannon. <laughs> just like it, want it. You could offer money for it. What's the fucking problem? They've got people killing each other and stealing stuff and you're worried about coveting oxes. <laughs> Maybe there was a whole plague of that going on. <laughs> Steve likes Freddy's ox. Freddy likes Jack's ox. Jack likes Roger's ox. Ah, the ox is always greener around here. <laughs> people going around. You've seen Steve's ox. It's fantastic. It's got such a big face. It's, 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 it's the most amazing ox I've seen. Bloody coveting oxes again. I can't. Stand it. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's ox. He's not my neighbor. He lives across the road at number 23. <laughs> it must be a typo or a scribo. Yeah, mustn't it? <laughs> yes, all please repeat the word scribo. <laughs> I just came up with it. It must be. It's not thou shalt not cover. It's thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's ox. Don't cover him up so and hide him. Because <laughs> come the plowing season, where's my fucking ox? I've got ten fields to plough where the kids will die. We have no food. There's no bloody ox. Jim, have you seen my ox? Oh, for fuck. Where's your duvet? <laughs> You've lost a duvet and I've lost an ox. I'm going to talk to the militia because something, some duvet ox stealer. I mean, what kind of crazy... Oh, no, there's your duvet. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> That's my ox. You covered up my ox. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's ox. Oh, Jim. I think you're going to go to hell on a technicality. <laughs> now, I'm going to finish up by talking about going to the moon. Because you went to... Not you guys, but because it would all be a bit of a squash. Um, got the whole Madison Square Garden in the spaceship. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now... When you landed on the moon, that was the point where God should have come up and said hello. Because <laughs> if you invent some creatures, you put them on the blue one and they make it to the gray one, then you fucking turn up and say, well done. <laughs> it's just a polite thing to do. He should have been there. Well done, Neil. Neil, well done. You made it. Made it to the moon, yes. Buzz, are you Buzz Lightyear? Are you Buzz Lightyear? Are you Buzz Lightyear? <laughs> Well, relax, take your shoes off, relax. This is the moon, this is where I live. I live on the dark side of the moon, yes. I live here with Darth Vader and Pink Floyd. Yes. Good afternoon. That's Pink Floyd. <laughs> and this is Darth Vader. My voice box is fucked up. <laughs> Hello. Also on the moon, we have uh, Mr. Squirrel here. Hey, man, what are you doing here? There's no atmosphere, man, except for these guys. Bung, 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 bung. Love loon. Sharky, the friendly shark. Hello, I found a child. 
I've lost it again. And also we have our wise old scribe, the giant squid. Giant squid diary, Dave, 5,927, star date, monkey, cheesecake, helicopter time. <laughs> so the humans made it from the blue one to the gray one. Well done. But will they make it to the end of the 21st century? It's up to them, man. They've got to think out of the box. It's up to them and that audience at Madison Square Garden at that gig in New York. You have to think big. You have to make it happen. I hope they do. This is the giant squid from the ship Nostromo <laughs> signing out. That's all for me. Thank you very much. Madison Square Garden, New York.